The thyroid gland is another gland found within the endocrine system. Uh, it is this butterfly shaped gland that we find situated above the heart and below the larynx or the voice box. Um, it wraps sort of around that trachea. And this gland produces three different hormones that we're going to walk through. It produces thyroxine or T4, triiodothyronine or T3, and it also produces calcitonin, which this one may sound familiar. We talked about calcitonin when we talked about that hormonal mechanism that regulates um, bone formation. So we're going to start with thyroxine and triiodothyronine, and we'll talk about how the thyroid gland produces these two hormones. Um, these two hormones, their job is to increase your metabolism. They actually accelerate the breakdown of glucose. And in doing that, they help to stimulate not only your growth, but also development. So let's talk a little bit about where T3 and T4 are created within the thyroid gland. If we look at this image on the left, you can see the thyroid. And on the right, this is looking at the thyroid gland through a microscope. And you can see these little cells here. You can see the dark staining nuclei. Those are called follicular cells. Those are the cells that produce T3 and T4. Now you'll notice here in the center, this big globule, this big pink structure. Um, this is the lumen found within those follicle cells. And that lumen's important because the lumen, that big globule in there, contains something called thyroglobulin. So this is what's stored within that lumen. And in order for those follicle cells to actually make T3 and T4, your diet must be high in iodide. So you have to have iodide in your diet. Now normally we can get iodide naturally from root vegetables that are grown in soil rich in iodide but not all areas of the country have soil that's rich in iodide. And this is why we have taken to fortifying salt. So I put an image over here um, of just a salt container. If you go to the grocery store, you're gonna notice a lot of salt says iodized salt. Um, we may not all get enough vegetables, but we definitely all get enough salt. Um, so it is important we get enough iodide for our thyroid gland to make T3 and T4. So what happens if you don't have enough iodide? So your hypothalamus, remember this is found up in the brain, it's the boss of the pituitary gland. Your hypothalamus will recognize that you have low levels of T3 and T4 and it will produce that hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone. This goes into the bloodstream, it goes to the thyroid gland and it tells the thyroid to make more thyroglobulin. So your thyroid will start making more thyroglobulin, let's go back, which is stored here in this lumen. But if you don't have iodide, you don't make very much T3 and T4. You have to have iodide to make those hormones. So the hypothalamus says, gosh, we still don't have enough T3, T4. So it continues to produce that thyroid stimulating hormone, releasing hormone, and thyroglobulin continues to increase in that lumen so let's go back and here, this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it results in swelling of the thyroid gland and this is something called a goiter. So here is an image of someone with a goiter. So that is a very enlarged thyroid gland and it's really big because of all that thyroglobulin that's being produced. Again, without iodide, even though you might have enough thyroglobulin, you cannot produce those hormones T3 and T4. So again, T3 and T4, these hormones are involved in the breakdown of glucose. They're involved in your metabolism. And so there are conditions where people have hyperthyroidism. So let's think of that prefix hyper. It means above or more than normal. So this is when you have excess thyroid activity. And hyperthyroidism can also sometimes be referred to as Graves' disease. If your thyroid is overactive, your metabolism is going to be high. And if your metabolism is high, if you are 
constantly going through reactions very quickly, usually your body temperature will be elevated. So excessive sweating is common when someone has hyperthyroidism. Because they are breaking down glucose very fast, weight loss is very common. And another symptom sometimes we'll see with hyperthyroidism, and I have a picture here, is bulging eyes. Now the treatment for hyperthyroidism is medication that um, slows down the thyroid. We call this antithyroid medication. Another option for this disorder is radioactive iodine. The only gland in your body that uses iodine is the thyroid. And we know that all forms of radioactivity damage living tissue. So by administering radioactive iodine, it basically kills off some of the thyroid gland so that it is no longer overactive. Now another condition is called hypothyroidism. And let's break that word down. Remember hypo means below. So this is when the thyroid is not as active as, it's, as it should be. Um, and so if your thyroid is not very active, then your metabolism is going to be lower. This is going to cause you to feel worn out all the time. You're going to be really tired. Oftentimes you're very cold because you are not going through all those reactions and generating body heat. Um, you're also not using glucose as fast as you should. So that's going to decrease mental acuity and alertness. Your heart rate will slow down. So the treatment for hypothyroidism is usually artificial thyroid hormone medication. So they'll give you injections of T3 and T4. Someone with hypothyroidism usually is overweight as well. Now the other hormone, remember there are three hormones that your thyroid gland produces, T3 and T4, but another one is calcitonin. Calcitonin gets released when blood calcium levels are high. So we talked about this way back in uh, chapter six when we talked about that hormonal loop. So anytime your blood calcium levels are elevated, your body goes, yes, I have extra, I'm gonna store it. And where you store it is in your bone. And how your body knows to do that is you release calcitonin. So calcitonin is released when blood calcium levels are high. It causes osteoblasts. Remember the B in blast for the B in build. They start building bone, laying down new bone, making your bone stronger. And you will deposit that extra calcium in your bone. And this is going to drop your blood calcium levels and get them back to normal. Now remember, blood calcium levels are incredibly important because we use calcium for everything. We need calcium for glands to secrete, cells to divide, muscles to contract, nerves to fire. We need calcium for every physiological function in the body. So your body very closely will monitor your blood calcium level. And if it's elevated, your body's like, woohoo, I got extra, let's store it for later. That's what calcitonin does, okay? Now the other gland that I want to walk you through is the parathyroid glands. Um, if you look at this image down here, this is the thyroid gland. Remember it looks kind of like a butterfly down here. The parathyroid glands are these little yellow structures that are found sort of situated within the thyroid. And the parathyroid glands produce a hormone called parathyroid hormone. And this is one that we talked about again back in chapter six. This one also plays a role in regulating your blood calcium levels. So I just told you back here on this slide that when your blood calcium levels are elevated, so when you have high calcium, your body is gonna release calcitonin. It's gonna store that calcium in your bone and bring your blood calcium back to normal. When your blood calcium level is low, remember you need calcium for everything. So when it's low, alarm bells start going off in your body and your body says, oh no, I need calcium and I need it fast. And how it gets calcium is by releasing the parathyroid hormone. This is going to increase your blood calcium levels by 
helping you absorb more calcium out of your food. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to stimulate osteoclasts. So remember when we talked about this in chapter six, I told you C, D, think of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, destroy. Osteoclasts destroy your bone. They break it down and they release that calcium into your blood and bring your blood calcium back up. The whole goal here of calcitonin and parathyroid hormone is to maintain a blood calcium level, to maintain homeostasis. So when calcium level is elevated, you release calcitonin. You store the extra calcium for later if you need it. When calcium levels drop, you release parathyroid hormone. You start breaking your bone down where you've stored that calcium, you release it into your bloodstream and get your calcium back up. Now, excess parathyroid thyroid production can cause high blood calcium levels and this can cause problems. If you are releasing too much parathyroid hormone, that means that you're going to be breaking your bone down a lot. So your bones will become very fragile. The other problem is if your blood calcium level is elevated all the time, your kidneys are going to try to remove that extra calcium and this can result in kidney stones. Um, there are various kinds of kidney stones that can form anything from uric acid to calcium, but you should not have calcium kidney stones. If you do, that's an indication that there may be a problem with the homeostasis of maintaining calcium in your blood.